Good afternoon, everybody. Y'all come on in, get a seat. Good to see everybody here. Um, got some folks online. Good to see them too. So um, today's uh, presentation will be uh, Civil War Deaths and Casualties um, regarding the Battle of Chancellorsville. And our presenter is Bob Lukabille. He's a historian with the Friends of the uh, um, Wilderness Battlefield. And I'm sure that uh, he'll have a, a really good, interesting presentation for us today. Uh, when At the end of his talk, y'all feel free to uh, ask him any questions. Uh, that you might have. All right, so I'm going to turn it over to Bob. <laughs> Thanks. Well, thank you all. Um, Mr. Walker, it's nice to see you, of course. Um, and, and as far as questions go, just, you know, very informal, wait in uh, at any point if there's something that I say or there's something up there on the screen that you... Uh, you, you, you do have a question on, please feel free. Um, not done this uh, before, uh, this particular talk. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll, see. we'll see how it goes. So Civil War deaths and casualties, uh, why, how, what? Why would you be interested in this? Well, <clears throat> I, I just found through the years that um, battles, leaders, you know, the basics sort of of the Civil War, uh, you know, uh, you've, you've read everything you can, not everything you can read, of course, but you've read a number of books. And, uh, and this is just for some reason has always attracted me. And um, I love, I love the, the cemeteries. Uh, where, where are these folks? Uh, what's the, you know, the family connection, you know, and, and the number of folks that we can't account for. Uh, that are buried out there somewhere. And um, I think you can, you don't have to go any further than the battlefield at Wilderness. And, uh, and, and you can, you can walk through there and um, um, the, 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 the possibilities uh, just sort of jump out at you. Um, and this is just a sort of the, the, the numbers keep changing. And we'll talk about that here in just a second. Um, why is that? Should we care? And then why Chancellorsville? And that's a number, there's a number of reasons why I ended up um, pursuing Chancellorsville, not the least of which is that it was the um, uh, second Corps, Confederate Second Corps Hospital uh, was at Elwood Manor and, and a volunteer there for oh, 12 or 13 years until the park decided that they weren't gonna use volunteers there any longer. And so now we're uh, the friends of the wilderness have moved on to mine run and we're affiliated with the American battlefield trust. And we are interpreting the, uh, the Payne's farm property. So if you haven't been out there in a while, you need to come out and visit with us. We'll be out there this summer. All right, let's see here. So the, um, Keep in mind, when we talk about deaths and we talk about casualties, we're talking about two different things. When we talk about the number of deaths, we're, we're, we're also including in that number, of, or that number, that overall number, about two thirds of that number is made up of folks uh, uh, with disease, that died from disease. They're not combat related. So when we talk about casualties, we're really talking about four different categories and you'll often see the the reporting broken down into into these four categories killed in action um what i call uh w uh wounded um uh, bless you and um um wounded wounded in action who are going to pass um i've seen you know uh, the next day i've seen months, okay, that it might take, depending on the severity of the, of the injury. And, and, uh, and then you, you get into, um, and we won't, 
uh, get into that discussion today, but you get into, well, what, did they die of disease or did they die of their wound? Did Stonewall Jackson die because he was shot and had his arm amputated or did he die of pneumonia? Um, would, would he have died of pneumonia anyway? Um, I, I, we, could, we could argue that um, as long as you wanted to, but um, it, it is, um, in my view, I, if, what I really, the way I really approached this was, what I'm, what I'm looking for here is, what's the impact on the Army going into the next battle? So where are we going after Chancellorsville? We're going to Gettysburg, okay? And when you look at the Confederate Army that moves, you know, out of Virginia and, and up to, um, to Gettysburg, it's a very different army than the army that, uh, you know, that Lee put in the field at Chancellorsville. And that was because, largely because of the tremendous losses that he suffered and the impact that it had on the leadership uh, in particular and, and just the, the general overall numbers um, uh, taken, taken together. Another category, uh, well, on the wounded side, um, sometimes your lists are very good and very complete and they'll list um, arm, uh, arm amputated. I've seen it, I've seen left leg blown off, you know, uh, and then there are other times it just says wounded. So sometimes you get a little, a little more information, sometimes you get a little less, but that's, that's gonna be the second category. The third category is prisoner of war. I think we all sort of have an idea of what we're talking about there. Um, Early in the war, they were exchanged. The prisoners were often exchanged. Later in the war, that policy is going to change, and the Union Army is not going to uh, exchange. And um, that, like I say, as we as as we move through and we get later on in the war, there's less and less of that. Um, and then there's the category of missing, which is um, sort of wide open in in my view. You can be talking about deserters, um, or you can be talking about stragglers. There's always sort of an element, I think, in every military organization that when the battle is about to occur, there's a certain number of folks that just seem to disappear. <laughs> and, and then, you know, when the battle's over, they'll oftentimes reappear and tell everyone what a great fight they had, and they did this and they did that, and everybody knows that, no. You weren't even there. You know, you were somewhere. You were behind a tree or wherever, <laughs> wherever you're going to get to. But there's some interesting there's some interesting um, uh, uh, books or or sections of books that talk about stragglers and and oftentimes these fellows it just seems like they needed rest and recuperation. They just needed to get away from the military grind. Um, now we're not talking about you know in the in the heat of the battle but they would disappear for a week or 10 days or two weeks and then just sort of come back and seem to be, you know, back to normal again. Small numbers, but, um, and sometimes just to be able to sneak into maybe a church uh, and sleep for the night and, and rather than, you know, be out in the rain and, and in a tent and, and so on. Um, and then oftentimes you'll see these, uh, these, um, folks will be uh, ID'd as POWs. They're not picked up as POWs right away, but the numbers are, in other words, they're gonna write this report oftentimes probably seven to eight to 10 days after the battle. It, it, uh, that's what seems to be mo in uh, most of the ones that I have seen. And so those numbers will change. And, and, and then at the end there, the uh, NFR, it's the dreaded no further record. And you'll see that frequently. And sure enough, you know, you'll go to, well, you know, I'll, I'll always think, well, if I go to fold three, I'll find, I'll find something. And you go to fold three and no, this guy was at Chancellorsville, um, no further record. So did he die? Did he desert? You know, we'll, we'll keep, you know, we'll keep his name out there and we'll keep looking, but he's just at this point, he is truly missing. So that would be sort of the, the definition. 
Shortly after the war, the number of deaths was placed at a total uh, number of 539,689. And that was published up through sort of the, the late um, 1900s. Um, and then early in the 20th century, there was a study undertaken. The government went back and looked at pension records. And of course, these are going to be largely the, on the union side. And they upped that number um, by almost 100,000 to 618, 222. Now, I've seen, of course, I've seen other figures, but in that ballpark of 600 and, and, um, and 18,000. And I think that's the number that probably when we were coming up through the in the books, your 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 um, you know your history books and so on, that's roughly the number that you would see. And that was pretty much the case up until um, 2011. And J. David Hart, uh, Hacker published um, some new figures. And basically, what Hacker did is he took the census numbers. 1850, 1860, 1870, and 1880, and he came up with a series of formulas um, uh, based on the numbers of white males that were um, in that census. And he came, he actually, his numbers came up to be, I think his range was 680 to 820. And the average was about 750,000. And most historians basically accepted that everybody felt like the old number was low and this at least kind of made sense in the way he he went about coming up with this new number um the thing there uh, to keep in mind is that that's really not based on you know individual folks um at which you'll see is when i work worked through the chancellorsville numbers you know, when I came up with my number 23% higher than anything that I had seen before, that's based on, you know, 23, the 23% more names. In other words, a body, I could put a name with it to get that number higher. It wasn't based on, um, you know, a formula that, that uh, based on overall numbers of the census. Does anybody, anybody, I, I've not read, um, Hacker's work. I just, I just um, um, you know, I just know that he's. It's sort of accepted at this point. I don't know whether anybody else has uh, done any work with it or not and looked at it. Okay, so those are those are the overall numbers. So so why um, why did I take a look at Chancellorsville? Um, I think we were all you know generally familiar. Um, certainly one of the most significant battles, um, uh, 200,000 troops were engaged, um, one in six were wounded and killed, which is a, which is a pretty high number. One in 10 is a little more like it usually. Um, Chancellorsville, uh, gave Lee, I, I, I think Lee had already made up his mind. He was going somewhere. He was, he was going to invade the North again. Um, but, um, then, then when Hooker crossed and, and came over and created the situation at, uh, at Chancellorsville, it just kind of put a little crimp in his, uh, you know, in his plans, but, uh, nothing that was gonna, uh, in other words, when it was over, he was, he was still ready to, to, uh, to move and get back to his plan. Um, the key date for us at, uh, as the research that we did at, at, um, at Elwood Manor uh, was on the 8th of May, we know that the Confederate Army was gonna go back into camp after the Battle of Chancellorsville. And when they moved all of the wounded, and this was basically, uh, the, the process would have been to put the wounded on ambulances, you know, reed wagon with springs, uh, and they're gonna move them over to the railroad at uh, Guinea Station. And then from there, they would be uh, moved back to Richmond. And that was the that was the typical uh, approach uh, in in most of the the battles in this general area. The wilderness is a little different because you're going to utilize you're going to utilize Gordonsville uh, quite a bit more, um, which I learned from Ray uh, 
when he talked about the cemetery out here. Um, so on the 8th of May, uh, the, uh, the medical staff at uh, Elwood Manor and at the, the uh, Wilderness Tavern, Second Corps, informed the leadership that they had 132 soldiers there that were too severely wounded to be moved. And their solution was, we'll take Elwood Manor, who was, which was part of that overall complex, we'll make Elwood a convalescent hospital, and we'll leave those 132 soldiers there. And that's what they did because it was a, it made perfect sense. Uh, Elwood Manor had a kitchen, had a laundry, um, had a nice house. Um, it, you know, it, it just, it just made good sense, uh, sort of out in the middle of nowhere. Um, the, the man they put in charge was uh, named, uh, John Graham Alexander. And, um, we'll, um, we'll take a, take a look at him here in a second. Um, so somewhere along the line, probably 10 years ago, uh, one of the reenactors, uh, who came out to Elwood, uh, on a frequent basis, three or four times a year, his name was John Pelletier and John portrayed a Confederate surgeon. And, uh, he, he just stopped me one day and he said, Bob, you know, sort of put his finger in my chest and he said, you guys really need to tell the story of, of Elwood as a convalescent hospital. And, and he said, it's, 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 cr it's a crime that there's nothing in this building that indicates that Elwood was, was a, and I truly believe that it's the only example, Confederate example of a convalescent hospital that you can find today um, that, you know, that we have, that's documented that we have, we have, uh, you know, records on. Um, John unfortunately passed away a couple of, uh, a couple of years ago and, uh, was a close friend and three of us went down and spent a little time with him when he was, uh, um, you know, he had been diagnosed and, uh, talked to his wife and she told us she thought he would enjoy the company. And, uh, he presented us with his, uh, with his surgeon's case, uh, which, uh, which I have and, um, you know, will always be a, a prized possession. But uh, anyway, so John, John's the guy that if I could name the room uh, out there, I would call it the, you know, the John Pelletier Memorial, um, you know, convalescent hospital or whatever. Uh, Park Service um, doesn't, doesn't view it that way. Yeah. So what we did is we, um, and, and, I'm, and, and this is a little bit off the track, but I thought you might find this kind of interesting. Um, we had no idea what we were gonna do. We had a room, a very small room. That was the only place we could, we could, we could do this. Uh, and um, so uh, three of us, uh, Bob Epp and John Canister and myself, um, we made road trips to, um, started at Seminary Ridge in uh, the hospital there in Gettysburg. Uh, we did the um, uh, 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 Civil War Medical uh, Museum in Frederick, Maryland. Uh, if you haven't been to these spots, you you really you, you really want to go. The folks at uh, the folks in Gettysburg were just incredible. Uh, they sat and talked to us for you know for hours on on end because again, we didn't have a background. None of us were really medical people, and we weren't sure exactly what we wanted to do. We didn't even know if we were going to have figures or not. But as we looked at other exhibits uh, in, in those, at those facilities, it became apparent to us that, that yeah, this is, this is probably what we wanted to do. And, and we, we said, well, the guys at, at, um, you know, at Gettysburg, we said, so what did you pay for one figure? And they had phenomenal layout there, obviously got tons of money. Um, and we said, they said, oh, this is the same outfit that makes all the, the uh, figures for the Sports Hall of Fame museums and uh, $10,000 a piece. And of course, you know, we were kind of like, uh, yeah, we got about 15,000 total that we were, we were hoping to spend. So, um, so we came back and we relayed that and we worked in, in all of this with John Hennessy. I think a lot of you probably know John, but he was the chief historian at the time at the park. And so we, we had to run everything through the park. 
And John said, well, John's wife was the curator at the Fredericksburg Museum, downtown Fredericksburg. And um, she had just bought a figure from an outfit in Baltimore, Maryland called Dorfman's. And uh, he said, really good. And, and she got it at a, at a very reasonable price. So we got online and we, we always, uh, anywhere we were going, we, we always had to have a barbecue restaurant somewhere in the area. And so we found one in Baltimore and we said, okay, we're going to Baltimore. So we made a road trip up and talked to the guys at Dorfman's. And um, the way they do this is they, um, you sit down in front of a computer and we had a picture. All right, let's see if I can do this. We had a picture of, this is Adam Wilson um, from Blacksburg, Virginia, 4th Virginia uh, Regiment. His, uh, he was shot in the, uh, just above the elbow in his right arm. His arm was amputated and uh, we, we had a, he was one of the 132. We had, we were only still looking for 131 now uh, because we, because we know who, uh, who Adam was. And then this is Dr. Graham. He was the chief surgeon. And when you see pictures of these guys, we, we did find pictures. We didn't have a picture of Adam. And I'll tell you that one story quickly here in a second. But uh, when, we, when we did come up with pictures, we were able to take the pictures to Dorfman's and they'll sit down with you and they've got like maybe 150 heads, okay? So, uh, you know, you can eliminate the women, you can eliminate African-Americans and so on and Native Americans. And so you get it down to maybe four or five, you know, reasonable head shapes. Some people are a little longer, some people a little rounder, you know. And, uh, and, and then we had to make a decision on the beards. And because we didn't know that they had beards, we knew they had beards when their photo was taken after the war, but we figured maybe they didn't have beards and we went back and forth. And of course, when you're talking five, six, 800 bucks a pop, that enters into the picture too, because that's how much a beard's gonna cost you. Um, so anyway, we decided what the heck, you know, we're, we're gonna go uh, full bore here. So we, we, um, we did uh, uh, go ahead and decide to put beards on the two individuals, but um, we were uh, very happy. Uh, unfortunately, the other two guys over here, we don't know anything about them. We have no idea, you know, we just uh, stole that view from the um, medical museum in Frederick, Maryland. They had a very similar scene and, uh, and we, uh, we liked it. And so, you know, you, we took it. That's it. No need to no need to reinvent the wheel. I always say, you know, if you see it, you like it, and and it works for you, then uh, and nobody's ever said, oh, you know what? I think you guys took that idea from. Uh, so, so anyway, um, real quick, I, I said we'd come back to Adam for just a second. Um, uh, we know, you know, we know where he enlisted, and. Uh, we know that his, his arm was amputated by a surgeon named Harvey Black. And Harvey Black kept a, 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 a log of letters. He wrote his wife almost daily. And those were published, uh, you know, after the war. And he mentions in here because the, uh, uh, he, the Black family obviously knew the Wilson family because he tells his wife, you know, tell Mr. Wilson that Adam, you know, I amputated Adam's arm. He's at Elwood doing fine. And um, so we knew there, there was a connection there. And uh, from later information from the family, let's see what I can do this. We know that um, his arm was, uh, he, you know, he was moved from down at the tavern on the 8th, moved up to Elwood as part of, the, the, uh, uh, of that uh, kabuki dance. And then uh, or somewhere around the 23rd, I think he says in his in in a newspaper article that he checked himself out of the hospital after a couple of weeks. Um, so uh, that was that was our uh, rough guess. Um, I, I'm well. We don't need to go into that. I, a, a lot of these folks who were le lost a leg, even or an arm or whatever, uh, ended up in the invalid corps and they were still part of the army and they could like guard a railroad or, you know, participate in some form or fashion. 
Adam did not do that. And we don't know, um, you know, he wasn't around to ask. So Adam, we lose track of him for about 15 years. And the next time he shows up, he's in Lewisburg, West Virginia, selling agricultural gates door to door. So I get this mental image of a, of a one-armed guy driving a buckboard around, you know, schlepping gates up to people's doors and knocking on the door. And he comes up to the, to the Tuckweiler house and Sarah, the young daughter, comes to the door and he says, you know, I'm here selling agricultural gates. I'd like to speak to your father. She says, I'll go get him for you. And she immediately goes to her mother and tells her that she just met the man she's going to marry. So, uh, and she did. And uh, so at that time, the house, uh, which is obviously still there in Lewisburg and is uh, actually occupied by his granddaughter. And uh, I'll tell you real quick about that here in a second. But um, uh, it was a stagecoach inn at the time. And the main road that ran through Lewisburg passed right in front of the house. You can see the road trace very clearly. And so uh, I mentioned Bob Epp before. Bob's sort of our master genealogist. And, um, and um, he called me late one night. We both are night owls doing research and uh, because we have no other life. And uh, he said, uh, I just found Adam's uh, granddaughter. And I said, I said, he's got to be his great granddaughter. He said, granddaughter. And I was like, oops, sorry. Didn't mean to, you know, step into your, your garden there, but you're the, you're the genealogist. And so, you know, when you stop and think about it, <clears throat> obviously Adam, who is, is uh, at the time, he's already sort of 40-ish. Well, he, they have about eight kids. So he's probably in his early 50s when his last son is born, and he names his last son Harvey Black Wilson after the doctor that amputated his arm. He always felt like Dr. Black had saved his life. So Harvey Black Wilson, you know, uh, gets a late start, and he is sort of like you know, his dad, he doesn't get married until he's very late in life. And his last child is the daughter, the granddaughter, who now owns the property. She and her husband. Yeah. Yeah. My, my, I, I call them late bloomers. I, I've got a son that, you know, he's, he'll be educating his last one until he's, uh, you know, drawing social security. Um, this is his, uh, this is the granddaughter. And, uh, so I went, I was, um, uh, on my way, I called her, I told Bob, I said, he said, I, I have a phone number. And I said, well, you know, is it all right? If, you think it's all right if I call her? And he said, sure. So I just called her up one night and introduced myself. And I said, you know, we're just a bunch of crazy guys out here, uh, researching your, your grandfather. And she said, oh, I've got his musket. You know, I've got all kind of pictures. I got all kind of papers. And I said, well, uh, around Thanksgiving, I'll be coming through Lewisburg to Charleston to uh, visit in-laws. Would, would you uh, mind if I stopped and talked to you? And she said, oh, no, we'd love to have you. So, um, so I stopped and visited. And then I got a call from her. And she said, we're on our way through your neck of the woods going to Maryland for a, for a wedding. Would it be all right if we stopped and visited? And uh, at that point, Adam was looked like this. He was living in my basement. And uh, if you can see, there's there's a uh, when we pick those up, there's they've got a set of uh, glass, you know, plastic like goggles that were attached to their heads. And and I said, oh, is that to protect his eyeballs? And they said, no, it's to protect his eyelashes that if you would happen to put your thumb or your finger and mash one, you know, you're never going to get them back, you know, as perfect as they, uh, you know, as they had them. Yeah. We, we, once we got the head shaped, then we sat down with trays of eyeballs and picked out, you know, the eyes and all the rest of the, uh, uh, the accoutrements to go with it. So, so anyway, um, 
That's Adam. That's uh, and and my sense is if if I could find him, uh, then I've just got 131 more names to go, and we'll have we'll have found all of the um, you know the patients that were that were at Elwood. Now some of those folks obviously didn't survive, and we know there were burials of some of those folks on the property that were later moved. All those bodies were exhumed and moved down to the Confederate Cemetery in. Uh, downtown uh, Fredericksburg. But um, again, we're, we've just been a little bit derailed because of the situation where we're now no longer at Elwood, but, um, but our work in that, in that regard will continue. So where did we start? We'll, we'll call this the rest of the story. Um, Elwood being a convalescent hospital. And of course, here locally, we know that the Exchange Hotel in Gordonsville was a receiving hospital. Correct. Could you sort of go through the hierarchy of hospitals? Yeah. Uh, kind of quickly. Well, well you, you had, had uh, uh, you know, what was that? Let me see here. This, this is, is from, from another, another uh, uh, we talked talk about, about uh, um, some, some of the takeaways, takeaways adaptability, adaptability is one, is one of them. Um, so, so ideally, ideally wounded, wounded soldiers, soldiers would be moved, moved from, from an aid station, station which would be just behind the firing, firing line, line just, just, just far enough away, away where you didn't get those straight bullets coming through. through. And, and then from, from the aid station, station they would be moved, moved to a field, field hospital. hospital. And, and that's, that's what, what we would call uh, the wilderness tavern area would be the second core, and that would qualify as a field hospital. And then uh, amputations would occur, would occur right, right there. They, they would do triage. They, they would decide who was most seriously wounded. wounded. Do, do we, we need to, in Adam's case, do we need to remove that arm? Do we need to remove that leg? And the and course, course, we've got, we've got some, some correspondence from, uh, from Elwood um, when, when the decision, the decision on those 132 were made. And Dr. Lafayette, Lafayette Hill, who was the, who was the head surgeon, is writing, writing back, back to Samuel Moore, Moore the head of Confederate, Confederate Medicine in Richmond. And, and he, he describes the, uh, the, the large uh, portion, portion of the injuries were um, upper, upper thigh amputations. So, so you, you can, can understand, understand why, why those folks were so, you know, know would, would, would be immobile and very difficult to move. Um, um, but uh, they, they called call it, it a, a, a three-core three system. system. And, and then, then your general, general hospitals would be, and the goal would be to get that individual eventually back to the general hospital, hospital which would be in Richmond. Richmond. So uh, uh, Gordonsville, Gordonsville, I think, would fit into, into that sort of, same, same category, category sort, sort of a field, field hospital, hospital or, or a receiving hospital. hospital. And then and from, from there, they're moved and transferred because, because they were on the railroad. railroad. That was, of course, was the key thing, thing. Just, just like Kenny like Station. Station. So, so there are railroads who get them back to Richmond. And, 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 and all, all the trains, trains that came into Richmond came into general receiving hospital number nine. And that's because it just, it was, I think it was a back warehouse originally. But it, but it happened, happened to be, to be a key, on a key, key spot, spot where, where the, all the railroads came, came together. together. And then and from there, there, there were over 50, 50 hospitals, hospitals, Confederate hospitals in Richmond. Um, now, now uh, the, the two, two biggest, biggest ones, ones Winder and Chimborazo, are the ones, ones you hear most about. But there, but there were, were a lot, lot of smaller hospitals. hospitals you know, you know, in, in fact, fact, some, some private homes maybe only had three or four, particularly for officers. Uh, that, 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 you know, where, that's how that number ballooned up to, you know, just sort of 50. And they, and they, and they would close and open and close. And close. Uh, you know, when, when, when there's a big battle, battle you know, you're, you're, you're obviously going to get a huge influx, influx and then things will die down, down quiet down over winter. winter. There's not much fighting. And some of those may close over winter and then open again. So, are there any of those hospitals in Richmond that are Still open. The buildings the are still, still there. there. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, they, they have, have most, most of them just, just have, have like a plaque on the building. building. Uh, uh, there, are there are a couple, couple of books that have, that have that been written about that. Trying to think, one of them was written, written by a lady, and she goes, she went through all fifty of the hospitals and 
tell them exactly where, where they were within, within the city, city and then the, the ones, ones that still survive, survive in it, but most, most of them are, are, are gone. Chimborazo, the, the property is still there. there. The National, National Park has their, their, their headquarters, headquarters and on, on that property, property but that's, that's not, that's the hospital's long gone. That's, that's, that's a different building that they occupy as part of that. Is Captain Sally Tompkins Hospital still there? I don't, I don't think, think so. so. Um, Sal Sal Sally Tompkins uh, is a lady who used to come out and with John, John Pelletier, I can't think of her name right now, yeah. who portrayed, she was the, a reenactor who portrayed uh, Sally Tompkins. And, and the interesting the thing, the more fascinating I became read about her, she had phenomenal numbers at her hospital. hospital. She, she had, had this, this like, like the highest survival rate. rate. Uh, of, of any, any of the hospitals, hospitals. And, and the Confederates, Confederates at some, some point, point somebody, somebody made a stink about her. Um, they, 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 they were closing, closing a lot of smaller hospitals, hospitals and she, she said, said oh, you're not going to close, close my hospital, hospital. And, she and she had a lot of support. And, and so, so Jefferson, Jefferson Davis, Davis apparently made her, uh, said, said, well, we'll, we'll get, get around that. that. And, that's and that's how she became captain and put her in the military. Uh, uh, but what I also have come to find out is that she was very particular about who she accepted as a patient. And that was one reason that her numbers were so good. So, But yeah, she's, you often, you always hear her name mentioned when you talk about the hospitals down there, Captain Sal Tompkins. Yeah, there's a window to her in St. James Church. Oh, okay. I don't have to mention that to you. Uh, Marilyn Blasius is her name, is the lady's name that portrays uh, Sally Tompkins. Okay, okay, any, any other, other questions, questions about, about is that, that, does that, that jive, jive Frank, Frank with, with you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I appreciate that, thank you. That's, that's this is obviously part of another. <laughs> There's some There's other pictures of the hospital room. Uh-oh, oh, now I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> I went, a little, far. I went a little, a little too, too far. far. Yeah. We well, the weird thing is that it's still up over here. Yeah. But that's, uh, that's, that's So, Bob, why, why can't you be at Elwood anymore? Um, uh, the, the Park, Park Service, Service uh, had, a had a change of leadership, leadership um, two, two years, years ago. ago. Um, um, John Hennessy and, and Greg Merch retired, retired at the same, same time, and, and the, the superintendent, superintendent took a new job, and, and the new folks that came in, in um, uh, the, the, the line, line short of it is we, we had an agreement, a special agreement with the park where we could go out and we opened the house, house, ran the house, house thank you, and, and for, for 25 20 five years, years and about, about five, five years, years ago, ago and, yeah, yeah, we were obviously getting sacked right here, but, and I get really worked up over this. But, but they, they uh, uh, don't worry, it's uh, on film too. Yeah. <laughs> we, 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 we met for we met for like twelve hours, hours and tried to work that agreement. And basically, and basically there were six items in there that we like. We wanted to continue to wear our shirts that have our logo on it, and we were told no, you can't do that anymore. Uh, and it just went downhill from there. And the last straw was that uh, there there will be no tours. There are no tours given in Elwood any longer. There's, there's, there, there'll, there'll be a ranger there, there and, and there, there are, are some, some volunteers there, but they're not necessarily, some of them still belong to the friends, friends but uh, some of them are just volunteers in the park that, uh, you know, that, 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 that volunteer there. there. But, but uh, they'll, they'll greet, greet a, uh, a, uh, you know, yeah, a visitor and, and tell them they're welcome, welcome to wander through the house, and if they have any questions, they'd be happy to answer them, but they don't They don't give a formal tour. Uh, I, can't I can't imagine, imagine someone, someone coming, coming going to Montpelier or, or Monticello, and and, and and you know and just, just being told, told well, I'll just wander around and you can ask us a question if you want to. Leadership, you know. Well, it happened during the pandemic, but not since. Yeah. So are the dummies still in Elwood? They are. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a little that's a little tricky, and I and that 
I, well, I shouldn't say it. I shouldn't say it keeps me up at night. But, uh, but, but we own, I mean, we paid, that, that hospital room was about $18,000 was all said and done. And, um, and so my concern is that they are cared for because we remove them from the room every year. We had mice problems. And I went in one time and there was a nice big hole in the shirt. And um, so, uh, you know, there are concerns about, um, because again, you know, Elwood Manor can't, you know, you're, you're never gonna be able to melt into that house. Um, it, it's just, just a park will allow, you know, yeah, the doors, doors are original, original doors, and they're going to stay original, original doors, doors, and you can, you can sit, sit there, there, and there's a gap like, like that, that, you know, you underneath know, the door. Uh, <coughs> that's <coughs> never going to go away. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, yes, yes the short answer, answer is that, that the, the, the figures are still there, and the room is still there. there. You can walk down, you can look in it, and there are two interpretive panels that explain, you know, Adam Wilson and explain the... Uh, the, uh, the system, system that, that, that we were just talking about, about with Frank, Frank. Um, but, but, um, but yeah, yeah no, no, like I say, it's, it's, there, there are no tours, so it's not part of the, of the, of the overall. overall. Okay, okay chances still, if we're going <laughs> to get out of here. Uh, 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 oh, oh, gosh, gosh I'm way back. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, so they move. move. And we'll talk about this. All right, so so, so we're um, so we're so ready we're ready to, to start, start the, the research process for this. this. And, and when 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 I decided, decided I wanted to try to find all those 132 people that were patients, and, 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 you know, it quickly, quickly became apparent that I I, did, I needed a good overall list of of, of, of uh, you, know, you know all, all the casualties associated with. That, that uh, second core. core. If you if you, if you remember the Battle of Chancellorsville, you had fighting in the city of Fredericksburg, often called Second Fredericksburg. You had fighting in Salem Church. Church. Those casualties were never part, part of the Second Corps, Corps Hospital out of Wilderness Tavern. It, it was only the fighting further, further down on the battlefield, the Second Corps. And so we were only interested in, but it's hard to separate all that out. So, so we just, just decided, decided what the heck, heck. We'll, we'll, we'll just come, come up with, a, with, a, with an overall casualty list, list and then we'll, you know, we'll, we'll eventually, we'll figure out who the 130 odd people, people were that were, you know, that were at Elwood. So, so what we, we discovered, discovered and, and do me a favor, favor uh, Phil, if you would, would there's, there's a stack of handouts in the back there. If you could give everybody one of those. And I think... We've, We've got, got enough, enough to, to let everybody, everybody have their own. I was thinking we might have to double up, but that's not the case. So, so, so what, what, what we've got, got here is, is um, um, the, the first, first the first document that we were able to, I went to the, you know, I went to John Hennessy at the park, and, and I said, all right, John, I need, uh, I'm, I'm looking for, for casualty figures for Chancellorsville. And, and John said, well, we had some volunteers Way back, back when, headed up, up by uh, Dominic Villarreal in 1996, and they, they put together, together a, a death watch for us. And, and if, if you if you've been, been to the Chancellorsville Visitor Center, Center there's there's, um, there's, there's a room, room and it's got all the casualties, the names on the walls. walls. It's, it's just, just list, list after list after list. list. Well, well, that's, that's what this this what this list was was essentially put together for was to, to, to compile, compile that list. list. Um, uh, I very quickly, when I got, got a hold of the list, list and I was, was looking at the wall out there, there I told John, John, I said, John, you got, got a small problem here because you got 84 Mississippians who were killed and you've only got one Mississippian painted on the wall in the room. And it was like, oops, I don't know how that happened. But, so if you really want to pull their chain one day, go in and ask them what happened to the other 83. Mississippians Mississippi that should be up, be up on the wall. Um, so that, that, this, this was, was and, and, and this, this, if you look, look at your your your, uh, your handout, handout, I think the first three pages, or yeah, the first, first two, two or three, three. First, first three pages, pages are uh, 
that's from that study by uh, my dog. And, and uh, uh, you can, can see that it's, it's, it, 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 it takes, takes in more than just the, the, the main four battlefields. Battle he lists Brandy Station. station. Um, he lists the church, church separately. separately. Um, my run, which I found very interesting, and I got that one because because now that we're interpreting out of my run, we're going to we're going to do the same drill there. But but here's here's what we we got as a list. So that was the first page. You can see mine. Well, you can see it there. It's been written on a little bit. But this was a complete list of Union and Confederates. Just, just an out order. order. It doesn't, doesn't give you a union. union. It doesn't, doesn't give you much of anything else. else. So, that, so that, was, was, that was that was our starting point, point. And, and we we began, we began to, to compile a database, and, and then, then I ran, ran across. And I'm almost reluctant to try to get, get this, this to come up, up but, but we ran, ran across it's the, the U.S. archives, U.S. U.S. archives. U.S. government wartime archives, maybe. maybe. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very basic, if you go to that, if you click on your website, it'll come up and, 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 and you'll see Louisiana, Georgia, Mississippi, I don't know, Confederate states. Um, and, it, it's, and it's a better database, but it's not... Um, it's, it's not, not it's, it's not, not everything, everything that you would want, want. But, it, but it but it's it's, 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 it's like, like a step up. up. And, and at the time, time that's, that's really all we had to work with. with. And, and then, then there's, there's um, um trying to remember, remember the order of these now. now. <laughs> I think I that then, then, then you, you got, got two pages, pages out of out of my uh out of our should say and uh And so this, so this is the Bible, Bible as I call it. And those, those two pages are taken from, from these, are, these are all, all the Confederate states. states. And so, so your, your first, first page, page there, I think that, that you had, you got, you got the two, two pages facing. facing. And the only, the only point, point I wanted to make there is, is once, once we started this process, process it's, it's kind of like, like, well, you know, we've, we've got, got the information, information about where they enlisted and when they were born. And, and so, so why wouldn't we include all of that in here as part of this data? data. So, so, so here's, well, you know, yeah, third, third Alabama, Alabama, fifth Alabama, Alabama and, so and so on. You can see, uh, and, this and this goes, goes all the way through, through for all of the states, states Georgia, Georgia, you know, yeah, Louisiana, Louisiana, et cetera. Um, South Carolina, Carolina, Tennessee, Tennessee Virginia. Virginia, and then, and then we'll, we'll we can talk, talk about, about some overall numbers here in just a minute. minute. But uh, um, but that's, that's what, what those those, those two pages, pages are taken from uh, our sort of our, our master, master list. list. And, and then, then here, here in the last, last couple of years, years this, this, this second database on here is called the American Civil War Research Database, and. I think, I think I gave, gave you the, the uh, I gave you the overall front, front page of that, right? Mm -hmm. and, and then I gave you one uh, one, one additional, additional page. page. Which, uh, <coughs> I don't I have a Let me grab it. Thank you. This this, this database. database here, here, and I don't, I don't get, get any, any if, you, if you decide to give me 25 bucks, bucks uh, is phenomenal. Um, you, can, you can go, go in here, here um, American, American Civil, Civil War Research Database, database. it just it comes, comes up, up civilwarnative.com, and, and this, will this will be your, your you know, this will be your first page that, that, that would come up in that database, and then, you know, you click on, you click on members, and then, and then your first, first page, page is going to give you all the states. states. So, so we, we want to go to Virginia. So you just click on Virginia, Virginia and it's, it's going to give you, uh, the next screen will give you a, um, a menu. You just type in, let's say, fourth. If we wanted to do the fourth Virginia, so we're going to type in fourth. And then it'll sort of pull down for uh, cavalry, 
artillery, infantry, so on. So we're going to go infantry and then we'll click that button and Viola, you know, here's, here's this screen and it's, it, and you can, you can see individual soldier and it's going to give you um, his company date. He enlisted um, if he was killed the out date, or if he deserted, whatever, however he got out of there. Um, for example, if you go down to Harvey Wilson, uh, he was killed at, at um, First Manassas. And if you go up to, what, three, four names above that, you can see our boy Adam, Adam Yehu, Adam J. Wilson, uh, who would be listed in here. And if you click on that name, okay, then the next screen is going to open up and it's going to give you a complete readout on him from the time he enlisted till he the time he went out of the army. It's and somebody went through the if you're familiar with the Virginia Regimental series, and I've only in uh, I've only ever seen three of those. Um, one here, complete set. There's one in the Virginiana room downtown Fredericksburg in the library, and at the uh, Emerging Civil War tour last year, we had a tour of Charlie McDaniel's house. I don't know whether you know Charlie. I think he owns Hildrup Storage. It's, it's right downtown, it's called the Sentry Box. It's been there forever. And, and he has his own private gun collection and library. And when I went, walked into his library, he, has, he owns a complete set of the Virginia Regimentals, which needless to say, blew me away. But uh, anyway, and and he is he's very uh, he's a very generous individual as far as you know donating to uh, a lot of different a lot of different charities. But he's he's very much interested in the Civil War and and is a big part of big part of that. But um, anyway, so if, if you're ever you know involved or want to do if you're looking for a family member, you know you name it, this is just to me is just completely amazing. Now. Some states like Virginia, North Carolina are far better than, let's say, Louisiana. Louisiana right now, it only lists, it has a listing of names. It, it doesn't break it down any further than that. But they're continuing to work on this. It gets better and better and better as you go along. So, like I say, um, I wish I had, I wish it were there like 10 years ago instead of, you know, more recently. But I'll take, you know, whatever I can get. Um, the, the, for me, the Bible, well, besides the one that we have, uh, for the battle of Chancellorsville is, uh, Stephen Sears book. And the reason I like Stephen Sears book is because when you go back here and someone has doodled all over my, my book, uh, you can see it lists a complete uh, breakout of all the, the casualties, you know, the killed and so on. So that was my starting point. That's, if you take a look at those, uh, the two pages front and back in your, uh, in your handout, toward the, toward the back, I, when I first put this together, and I got lazy. I started, um, you can see that I listed Sears for each, you know, for each unit. Fifth Alabama, third Alabama. For Sears, six, uh, there were 16 deaths. And then where there was, for the official record, where there was a number in the official record, I put that in. But there were so few for the official record, I should have just dropped that category out of there. And then the last column, would be our number from FOWB. So you can see that for the third Alabama Sears's book, which I considered to be, you know, pretty complete and pretty thorough, he had 16 deaths. We have 26 names at this point for that one. So if you go through this all the way through, just flip front and back, it'll take you through all of the states, through all of the units. And when you get to the very end, you'll see that in Sears's book, he listed 17,024 uh, deaths. 
And right now we sit at 2,268, which is a 23.9% increase uh, that we've been able to find. So what, is, what does all that mean? Uh, I'll be honest and tell you that I don't know uh, exactly what all that means. Um, hey, if, Bob, uh, question? Yes, sir. Your, um, your order of battle. Right. Is that uh, brigade and division in the, in the second or third column? Uh, which uh, is O'Neill Road? Yes, yes, that's, that's correct. correct. Brigade division. Right. 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 Yep. 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 Exactly. exactly. Um, um, so that's that's, that's what, what you have. have. I, 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 I was afraid this would be an eye chart, chart and it, which it is, is, and, and so, so that's, that's why I had and, uh, printed it off, off on, uh, printed it off, off, you know, at a higher level. level but you can see, see the, the difference: the 17, 17, 24, and 28, 68. Here. Um, so, um, You know, you know, every every, every county, county you read of Chancellorsville, it's, it's you know it's, it's Lee's greatest, greatest victory. victory. He divided, he divided his, his army twice. twice. Uh, uh, you, know, you know, so on and so, so forth. forth. Um, However, uh, if, if you, you when, when we when, when I, I said, said at the very beginning, beginning you, know, you know what, what is, is what does this, this really mean, mean or, or why do we care? care? I think when you step back and you look at the numbers, you know, from from a distance, from a bird's eye view, if you will. Or, or drones, drones you. Um, that, that when you, you look, look at May the third, uh, basically, basically it was it was from, from that point forward, um, it was, was a slow and ever march, march to, the, to, to, to his army's destruction. destruction. Um, um, peak in efficiency at Chancellorsville, but it, it, he, he was he was losing combat officers at an alarming rate and unsustainable casualties. Particularly in his office core, and, and the, the Confederates, Confederates, you know, they started, started out at a disadvantage. You know, you know when you look, look at where did all where, where did the majority of the officers who graduated from West Point, you know, uh, uh, no, they, they stayed in the Union Army. In, 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 in most cases, cases I believe that Lee was the only colonel in the state of Virginia that graduated from West Point that that became went into the Confederate Army. Is that right, Frank? I've been told that there are only two okay. regular army colonels who did not stay with the regular army. Yeah. Okay. So, so, I mean, I, mean, I, I, think, I, think, I think they were far enough up they could see the big picture. Yeah. Like Sherman, because Sherman was teaching a head of a military academy down south. And, and he I could see the south. I think a number, number, number of them had married uh, southern. southern. You know, into yeah, other families, families is, is uh, the reason a few of us stayed. They knew how it was going to end. So, so if, again, again, going back, back to, to, uh, to Chancellorsville, uh, um, uh, the Union, now, now remember, remember this, this is, is, these are casualties, casualties so we're back, back to our four, four categories, categories, but, uh, and, 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 and there, there were more Union soldiers present at, at Chancellorsville, but, but, but Hooker, uh, uh, did, he, he, he had, had 50,000 50, reserves, and he, he, didn't, he did not engage in that, in that, in that uh, uh, conflict. So, so of the 83,000 83, he had engaged, he, he suffered about 13%. Uh, Lee had 13, you know, had fewer casualties, but when you look at his, his um, effective numbers of 60,892, he lost, he suffered a, a, a loss of 22%. Um, you know, I mean, the math just, it's, it's, you can't, it just doesn't work that way. He lost five brigade commanders, three division commanders. And of course he lost one corps commander who was Stonewall Jackson, of course. Um, but the attrition in, in the lower ranks, um, of 134 regiments, he lost 64 field grade officers, um, and, and was forced to, you know, completely reorganize. Um, his army into three elements, vice two, uh, before, uh, you know, before they went to, um, uh, to uh, before they, you know, they went up to Gettysburg. So they would never be as efficient, you know, as they were before. And if you, if you didn't, you know, if you didn't have those numbers, if you didn't, couldn't see that, um, you know, you might, 
that might be a point that you know that you would miss. And that's it. So I have a, um, when I took my graduate level military history classes in college in the early nineties, you know, we were taught then that the 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 way the North or the way the Civil War was fought shifted from a war of maneuver early in the war, and then when Grant was installed as as commander of the Army of the Potomac, then it shifted to war of attrition. Yep. And once it shifted to war of attrition, with the with the outset of Grant's command, that's that was sounded the death knell of the of the Confederate Army. Um, but what I see here is even during the period that the that the Confederate Army was still fighting that war of maneuver, the attrition rate still had a major, major impact on their ability to carry out future operations, even even well before Grant uh, came into the picture for, for the for the Army of the Potomac. They didn't have that. What do you, what do you, what do you call it? You know, the, 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 the line, the, the, the guys that were moving up. up. It, it, you know, they're, they're, they're both, both going to suffer, suffer, you know, losses. losses. And, and again, again keep in mind, mind, Civil War, even, even your generals, generals, they live in the front. front. You know, that's, that's why, why these colonels and these folks are, are, you know, they're, they're, they're out, 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 they're out there. You know, they're, 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 they're putting themselves in harm's way. That's the way, that's the way we fought back then. But, um, yeah, I mean, but they, but again, the Confederates just didn't have the depth, depth, you know, to continue to bring new, new fresh, fresh in. Think, think of the experience. experience. I mean, even, even a lieutenant, lieutenant, you know, who gets killed. Okay, okay so, so the best, best maybe you can hope for is to bring uh, maybe a senior NCO is going to step up into that position. position. You're going to commission him. him. But, but he doesn't, doesn't have, have, you know, they, they don't, don't have the experience, you know, in that position as a lieutenant that, 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 that the union's going to be able to, to you know, to, to, to continue to fill their ranks with, with, you know, with, with more, more experienced individuals, uh, you know, in the Confederacy. Um, I, I, you know, you, 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 you always talk about all you know, the railroads and the, and the, you know, the uh, steel production and, you know, all those things that, you know, we know the North had a tremendous advantage of. I just don't think this is probably gets as much. Play as it should. Mm. But following up on what Ray's talking about, in terms of maneuver, Lee took an entire army and with the competent people that he had going into Chancellorsville, he was able to make that army dance. And there was never a commander anywhere north or south who ever did that with Lee. Yep. yep. And, 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 you know, yeah, I, I, I think, think that, that that's, that's part of that. that. I, I, you know, you, know, you, you, you wonder, wonder, like going to the Gettysburg, that, that pick a charge and those, those kind of things, things that, that, that they, they, they had, had sort of gotten, gotten this air of invincibility that, you know, that Lee felt they could, you know, the common soldier loved him, they could do anything that he asked them to do. Maybe they asked him just a little bit too much, much in, the, you know, yeah. in that yeah. particular yeah. instance. But, uh, Thank you, Bob. They, they, they said, said that the, 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 the cheering that, that, you know, when, they, when, when it was obvious, obvious that, that the, uh, you know, the, the Union, Union Army, Army had ceded the field, the field to them and Chancellor filled up, you know, the, and, and Lee came riding, riding down, down uh, you know, with the troops and the cheering. And, you know, that that's, you know, you can't, can't, you can't, can't measure, measure that, that, you know, you know it's, it's just, just uh, you know, it's just, just be amazing. amazing. But, but when you, you back, back off and you look at those numbers, numbers and you, you know, yeah. and you go, wow. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was a great, great victory, victory, but it was, was also, also a very costly victory. victory. Mm -hmm. Also, Bob, uh, at Chancellorsville, was, was Archer's Brigade the only Tennessee uh, force that was that was involved there, or was Thomas Legion still around and engaged at Chancellorsville? It's not on your not on your casualty list, but I don't, don't know the answer. Because I think I Thomas Legion was was in Fredericksburg and 
in late 1861, but I, I don't know if they stayed or, or made their way back around with, with the Army of Northern Virginia. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Tennessee. Tennessee. Yeah. The Thomas Legion. Well, there were there only, only three Tennessee, Tennessee regiments, regiments, according to what I have. The okay, first, the seventh, and the fourteenth. And that yeah, was, those were all Archer and Hill. Hill. All right. It would have been the, the uh, right, officers They may have been pulled back down into the Army of Tennessee by that time. But I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, take, I'll take a look. look. Yeah, yeah, see. But, but yeah, yeah, according to what I got, got it's, it's, uh, it was it's all Archer and Hill there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Do we know what casualty figures General Lee was using himself to think about chances, though? You know, yeah, I, 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 don't I don't really know, know the, answer the answer to that. To that whether whether I, you would assume that, 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 um, that they should, should have been, been put, put together, together by, by um, uh, who did who I, who did I mention before, the, the, the uh, Surgeon General? General. Um, More. Well, well uh, yeah, who, would who would have been, have been the man on the scene, scene here? Oh, uh, Lockheed Lock Gill, right? right? So, so Gill would, would be the guy who's putting, putting those together. together. And, and, and I do, do know, know that, that at one, one point, point Lee, Lee issued an order that, that he didn't want slightly, slightly wounded, wounded to be a category within the reporting. And I'm not 100% sure why that was. I mean, he must have had a good reason for doing that. But, but, um, 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 but um, did, did he, he, you, you would, would think, think he would have had, had to pass. I don't know whether he had to sign off on those. those. I don't know the answer, but, but it's a good question. question. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, but I think, I think all those were compiled by, by um, you know, by, by, the, by the surgical staff, staff that were responsible. And, and, and what I also found is that in some cases, there's reports and, and it, could it could have been, been you know, just, just war. It could, it could have been, been that it could have been those reports, reports got back to Richmond and, and they got, got lost in the fire because uh, in, the, in the fires, fires I, guess I guess I should say. But but, but a lot of the medical records. records. What, what we've got, got were records, records that existed, that existed out, out with the hospitals, hospitals you know, that, that were away from the, from the downtown area or with the armies, you know. But but they you know but they lost a lot of it. But 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 those records are very incomplete. Yeah, and I, I, I get, I get drawn off here, but uh, it's, it's just like, like when you look at the Virginia regimentals, and, and I don't know if Frank we ever talked about this, but what I've, I've, I've found out is those Virginia regimentals are, I would to be kind, I would say very uneven. Some of them are phenomenal, and the detail, and, and, and it's obvious that they just put in a tremendous amount of time, and others are very sparse, very sparse. Mr. Howard, if somebody would volunteer to write a regimental history, he rarely turned it down. Yeah, yeah and, and I, I think, think that, that somebody, somebody told me the closer, closer they got, got to the deadline, deadline you know, the, the more, more more lax he was, was about, about what he was, was what he would take uh, yeah, as, as far as, as you know the final drafts were concerned. Yeah, yeah, some of those, those are. are uh, I mean, it's, it's a great resource, but you just wonder, you know, in some cases. The fourth, fourth Virginia, Virginia comes, comes to mind for some reason that, that. Um, because, because because that's, that's the one that Adam Wilson was in, and I did, you know, I did a lot of work in there. And I just remember thinking, that was in the Stonewall Brigade. Yeah. yeah. So you still have 131 people to track down. Yeah. yeah and, and and I I got, I got started, started on that when we were still, still you know with the park, park and unfortunately, unfortunately I, I think I came, I came up with a possible list of like. But but but, but I, I, I did, did find, find out, out what exists in, in, in uh, the National, National Archives, Archives is, is that I mentioned the ninth hospital, the receiving hospital in Richmond. Those records actually exist. They're, they've not been digitized, which is unfortunate, but they're there. And so that's on my, you know, my list. That at some point I, I would love to to be able to sit down and look because see, we know they they moved all these folks out on the eighth of May. So, so if, if I can go and look, look at the receiving hospital, you know, list, and, and, and I can, can match those up, up then, then I can, can take, take a lot of those folks off my list, list 
that I, I, I know went on a river. Richard. And, and, and that, that, you know, and, and then, then, and then if, if I got, got that list down to maybe a couple hundred or something, something then I'd be a lot easier, easier to go and look at individual, you know, individual records. records. Because, because a number of those guys, guys are probably, well, well again, again, you don't, don't know, know what the exact percentage is on the amputees, but some of those guys are probably going to get to the point where they could go back and join units, but I, you know, I just, you know, you don't know until you get in there. But no, it's... Yeah. yeah, it's, it's still, still a work. work. Um, it's still, still a work, work in progress. progress. And uh, uh, even though, the, well, you know, I, I gotta tell you, Bob, if you, as far as those records are concerned, you're having to deal with the park service. And a lot of the younger people coming into the park service are looking for five o'clock Friday and payday. And you'd be better off working on my run. Can you, you can, can you, you shut, shut off, off your camera? camera? <laughs> <laughs> Too late. <laughs> <He'll> delete that. <laughs> no, they need to hear it. Some of the stuff we don't yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. Well, well I, I, I know that. Somebody's gonna call me on Monday now. <laughs> that's, that's right. right. That's, that's right. right. That, that was, was that was that was, that was the, the article that Phil put in there. Uh, like, uh, we were here half ago. I never did respond. They were they were unhappy with this. They don't, they don't like, like to be, to be called, called out, out. And, 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 you know, our sense was we, 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 we just, we just told them exactly like it happened, happened just, just like, like, you know, you know I, I said, said that, that, that they, 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 they there were six items, and when we got down to the very last, we said, if, even if we just can hang around and just, you know, we'll let everything else go, we won't have access to the building any longer, although we had keys and codes for 20 years, we had, at one point, they asked us, they didn't ask us, they told us, you need, you need to go, to go get, get a background, background check. check. Okay. okay, you know, no, I'm, I'm, I'm a retired Department, Department of Defense employee. I've had a background, you know, you know investigation and check all my life. Uh, no, no problem. problem. Oh, oh, you have, have to go out to the Shenandoah Valley uh, to, to, to make that happen. Okay, okay we'll, we'll do, do that. that. So, so you drive out on your own nickel, uh, your own time, and to get and get get fingerprinted. And but none of that mattered at that point because again, it's an entire leadership team. And I will, I will say, say that, that one of that, that one, one of those, those folks, folks yeah. one of those, those folks has already moved on, on to a, to a, 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 a new job, and kind of like you know, as Frank was saying, so so do you see a, a potential in the future at any time a potential uh, reunification of? Friends of the Wilderness Battlefield. I, I, think, I think there's a good chance. I, I, as I tell people, you know, I'm not going anywhere. Um, I'll be 80 in October, and, and I, you know, this is kind of what I do at this point in life. Um, and and so, in some form or fashion, but we we always say the door is always open as far as Friends of the Wilderness is concerned. We would love to sit down and talk about this. But, but until, until some, some policy change is coming, coming, you know, from from, from, from them, them, I mean, right, right now, now there's just not much to talk about. Uh, the, last the last year that we were out there, there I will say this: this. We, we had the, the, we had that building open 120 days. days. Last, last year, our building was open for 60 days. days. Hmm. Um, yeah. yeah, do the math. So, so who did we write to? <laughs> um, I, I, I was. Say so you, you just go ahead and write to Superintendent Rogers and uh, Lewis Rogers and uh, make your make your feelings known. What about the governor? Well, well on the lawn. I, 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 um, well, well, there, there, there are still. still there, I think there, there are still three. three. Well, the, the interesting, interesting thing is, when, once, once we moved on, they suddenly found, found money to hire someone to uh, to run the ground. We've been doing that on a volunteer basis for twenty years, and then. Oh, and, and, and the first, first thing they came to me and said, we, we need $20,000 a year to do that. And I said, you're dreaming. And, and so um, they, they they suddenly, oh, well, well guess what we found one. one. And, they, and they hired, uh, hired somebody. Um, but, but there's still, still, I think, three folks that, you know, no, I, I, I mean, it's, 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 it's hard to let go for folks that, like, you know, have been doing this for so long. And you you feel so emotionally attached to it that... You know, yeah, to, 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 just to just walk, walk away, away from, from it. Um, pretty, pretty difficult. difficult. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. And if, if, if you, you don't, don't think, think